Do we need laws, specifically those ancient Ten Commandments? We are saved by grace. These decrees, etched in stone over 2,000 years ago, are archaic, outdated, irrelevant in our contemporary world. We live in a world that's technologically advanced, digitally connected, and rapidly evolving. A world where everything is instant and the concept of waiting is almost obsolete. In such a progressive world, why would these ancient laws still hold any significance? They are simply relics of a bygone era. Do we really need to abide by these seemingly obsolete rules in our modern society? And why should we, in this day and age, still feel bound by commandments given to a nomadic people in the wilderness of Sinai? Well, the Ten Commandments, as detailed in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, have been the bedrock of moral and societal norms for millennia. They've guided civilizations, shaped cultures, and influenced legal systems across the globe. But in our quest for progress and innovation, have we outgrown these basic principles? Have our advancements in science and technology rendered these laws redundant? There's a growing belief that we are free spirits, unbound by any laws or commandments. We live in an age where personal freedom and individual rights are cherished and celebrated. We champion the right to live our lives as we please, to follow our own path, to make our own rules. So where do these Ten Commandments fit in our modern way of life? Do they restrict our freedom or do they guide us towards a more meaningful existence? Do they confine our spirits or do they provide a framework for a harmonious society? As we query all of these questions, let's remember that these laws were not intended to be burdensome. They were designed to promote peace, uphold justice and foster love and respect among humanity. So we return to the question, aren't we free human beings with free spirits? Yes, indeed we are. But does our freedom absolve us from the responsibility of living a moral and upright life? Let's ponder on that as we continue our journey. Yet God gave us these holy precepts not to bind us, but because of his profound love for mankind. You see, these laws, these commandments, they're not chains to restrict us. Rather, they're shields, protective barriers, if you will, designed to safeguard us from the repercussions of our own transgressions. Imagine this. You're about to step off a cliff. There's a sign that says, danger, do not cross. Would you see that sign as a restriction, a limit to your freedom? Or would you see it as a means of protection, a warning to keep you from harm? That's how God's law works. It's a sign, a guide, a warning to keep us from stepping off the edge into the chasm of sin. God, in his infinite wisdom and boundless love, knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our weaknesses, our tendencies, and our proclivities. He knows the pitfalls and snares that lie in wait for us. So he gave us these laws, these commandments, to help us navigate the treacherous terrain of life. But there's more to it than just protection. God's law is also a pathway to joy. To happiness you see god doesn't just want us to be safe he wants us to be happy that's why he gave us these precepts when we obey god's law we align ourselves with his divine design for our lives we find purpose meaning and fulfillment we experience true joy and let's be clear here this isn't fleeting ephemeral happiness we're talking about this isn't the momentary transient pleasure that the world offers no this is deep lasting soul level joy this is the kind of joy that springs from a life lived in harmony with the creator of the universe. So let's not see God's law as a burden, as an imposition. Let's see it for what it truly is, a gift of love from a God who wants nothing but the best for us. Remember, the law of the Lord is perfect. Every deviation from it is evil. Disobedience to God's commandments doesn't come without consequences. Now imagine this, a world where everyone chooses to follow their own moral compass, disregarding the ancient laws that have guided us for generations. This would be a world rife with chaos and confusion, wouldn't it? This is the reality of disobedience. Those who defy the commandments of God and dare to encourage others to do the same are met with stern condemnation. This isn't a scare tactic, but rather a plain, hard truth. The Saviour, through his life of obedience, demonstrated that the law can indeed be upheld. His life serves as a beacon of hope, a testament to the transformative power of obedience. Let's imagine for a moment a single life lived in full accordance with God's laws. This life shines like a diamond amidst the rubble, a beacon of hope in a world clouded by disobedience. It's not a life devoid of challenges or hardship, but it is a life that radiates a distinct sense of peace, 
contentment, and fulfillment. This is the life of the Saviour, serving as an exemplar of obedience, and more importantly, a testament to the excellence of character that obedience to God's commandments can develop. By obeying God's laws, we don't merely show respect to the divine, we reveal the potential for greatness within us. We become bearers of light in a world clouded by disobedience. We become ambassadors of peace in a world torn apart by conflict. However, those who choose to defy God's commandments, those who argue that his laws are unjust and unattainable, are essentially supporting the very claims that led to the downfall of the great adversary. They echo the deceptions of the one who first rebelled against God's law. They cast shadows of dishonor upon the divine and ultimately upon themselves. All who disobey are in essence supporting the claim that God's law is unjust and unkeepable. Let us remember the law is not a burden but a guide leading us towards a life of joy and fulfillment, a life that echoes the divine. The stakes are high when it comes to God's law. It's more than just about earthly consequences. Our actions and decisions in this life, particularly our adherence or disregard for God's law, have profound implications for our eternal futures. Take into consideration momentarily the celestial realm, a place of harmony, peace and righteousness. It's a realm where the law of God reigns supreme, underpinning the very fabric of its existence. Now imagine admitting into this realm individuals who have willfully disregarded God's law, those who have chosen to live contrary to his precepts. What might be the outcome? The consequences could be dire. Discord and rebellion could once again infiltrate heaven as they did when the first rebel, Satan, rose against God's law. The well-being of the universe could be imperiled, the harmony disrupted and the peace shattered. God, in his limitless wisdom and eternal love, seeks to prevent such an outcome. His law is a protective shield, a guide to righteous living that ensures the preservation of harmony and peace. Every deviation from this perfect law is a step towards evil, a move that supports Satan's claim that God's law is unjust and can't be obeyed. Those who break God's commandments, those who teach others to do the same, are not only casting dishonor upon God, but are also aligning themselves with the adversary, Satan. They become, in essence, children of the wicked one, followers of the first rebel against God's law. Admitting such individuals into heaven would be akin to reintroducing the elements of discord and rebellion. It would be a gamble with the well-being of the universe, a risk too great to take. God's law, the Ten Commandments, is not an arbitrary set of rules. It's a divine blueprint for happiness, a guide to a life of joy and fulfillment, and it's a prerequisite for entry into the kingdom of heaven. No man who willfully disregards one principle of the law shall enter the kingdom of heaven. The stakes, my friends, are truly high. It's about more than just the here and now. It's about eternity. Obedience to God's commandments isn't merely a duty, it's a pathway to happiness. In the big picture of life, the threads of obedience weave a pattern of joy, peace and fulfillment. The Ten Commandments, those divine precepts etched in stone and in our hearts, aren't just arbitrary rules set down by a celestial taskmaster. They are the loving instructions of a heavenly Father who desires nothing more than our ultimate happiness. Consider the commandment, Thou shalt not steal. On the surface, it's a directive against taking what doesn't belong to us. But delve deeper and you find it's a lesson in respect for others, in self-control and in the joy of earning things honestly. It's a principle that, when obeyed, leads to a harmonious society, a clear conscience and a heart full of peace. Then there's honor thy father and thy mother. It's not just about showing respect to our parents. It's about acknowledging the sacrifices they've made, appreciating the wisdom they've accumulated and understanding the love they've shown us. It's about fostering strong relationships, nurturing love and respect and cultivating a deep sense of gratitude. These laws, these divine directions are not meant to stifle us, but to free us. They free us from the chains of selfishness, from the shackles of guilt and from the prison of remorse. They guide us onto the path of righteousness a path illuminated by the light of love, paved by the stones of justice and leading to the destination of true happiness. In the vastness of the universe, we are but tiny specks. 
Yet we are specks loved by a God so great, so boundless, that, that he gave us a guide to navigate the tumultuous seas of life. He gave us his law, not to control us, but to lead us to the shores of happiness. In the end, obedience isn't about conforming to a set of rules. It's about aligning ourselves with the divine principles of love, justice, and righteousness. It's about choosing joy over sorrow, peace over conflict, and love over hatred. In obeying God's law, we find true joy, peace, and ultimate happiness. It is indeed the law for our happiness.